last year you never knew. Drunk from me, couldn't be known. At 16, young Ned was a wild, reckless lad. Robbed coaches and trains without fear. <gasps> Till one night they caught him red handed and <gasps> sent him to jail for a year. But when he came out, he was bitter and harsh, harsher than he ever had been. He robbed and he plundered, became a tough guy, the toughest Australian had seen. Now down England Rome, they held up the pub, having a drink and a song. <laughs> the troopers rode up, surrounded the place. The Kellys had waited too long. Now Ned came out shooting, gun in each hand, wearing his armour of steel. Several times he was wounded before he fell down. Never more would he plunder or steal. They took him to Melbourne, they nursed him to health. The judge said, you're guilty, to Ned. A rope from the raft, son in the east, and the famous Ned Kelly was dead. Some call him a hero who gave to the poor. Others a killer, they say. But this all goes to prove that the old saying is true. The saying that crime does not pay. <laughs> <laughs>
Far away the couples the were dancing to the music of his band. He was a man, and he wasn't doing her wrong. Well, in the front room walked a redhead. <gasps> he saw her right away. <coughs> she came down to the you know, table to watch him while he played. He was a man, and he wasn't doing her wrong. Well, he sang every song to the redhead. She smiled back at him. He came down to a table where the lights were low and dim up. Frankie didn't know, wouldn't hurt her none. Well, the redhead, she jumped up and slapped him. She slapped him a time or two. She said, I'm Frankie's sister, and I was checking up on you. Uh -huh. If you're her man, you wouldn't do her wrong. Well, the moral to this story is be good but carry a stick. For sometimes it looks like a guitar picker just can't tell what he beats. He was Frankie's man. <laughs> and he still ain't done her wrong. Oh. That's Johnny Cash's verse. Yeah. 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 That's Johnny Cash's verse. Yeah. 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 I heard you sing it.
camera. Yeah. 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 No, it's yeah. so yeah. talented. No, 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 and Wolfie said, may I come in? <laughs> Poor Grandma was terrified. He's going to eat me up, she cried. And he was absolutely right. He ate her up in one big bite. But Grandma was small and tough. And Wolfie wailed, that's not enough. I haven't yet begun to feel that I've had a decent meal. He ran around the kitchen yelping, oh, I've got to have another helping. <laughs> then added with a frightful leer, I'm therefore going to wait right here till little Miss Red Riding Hood comes home from working, walking in the wood. He quickly put on Grandma's clothes. Of course he hadn't eaten those. In came the little girl in red. She stopped. She stared. And then she said, Grandma, what great big eyes you have. <laughs> All the best to see you with, my dear, the wolf replied. Grandma, what great big ears you have. All the better to hear you with, the wolf replied. <coughs> but Grandma, what a wobbly great big furry coat you have on. That's wrong, cried wolf. Have you forgot to tell me what big teeth I've got? Oh well, no matter what you say, I'm going to eat you anyway. The small girl smiles. One eyelid flickers. She whips a pistol from her knickers. She aims it at the creature's head. And bang, 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 she shoots him dead. A short while later in the wood, I came across Miss Riding Hood. But what a change. No cloak of red. No silly hood upon her head. She said, hello, and do please note my wealthy furry wolf skin coat. <laughs> Me, 
mummy. <laughs> mummy answered nothing more. She had fainted on the floor. <laughs>
don't blame him because he ran and hid, but the meanest thing that he ever did was before he left, he went and ate me soup. <laughs> well, he must have thought it was quite a joke because he got a lot of laughs from lots of folks. Seems I had to fight my whole life through. Some girl would giggle and I'd get red, and some guy would laugh and I'd bust his head. I tell you, life ain't easy for a boy named Sue. Well, I grew up fast and I grew up keen, mean. My fists got hard and my wits got keen. I roamed from town to town just to hide my shame. But I made me a vow to the moon and stars that I'd search the honky tonks and bars and kill that man that give me that awful name. Well, it was Gatlinburg in mid July and I'd just hit throat in town and my throat was dry. Thought I'd stop and have myself a brew. In an old saloon in a street of mud, <coughs> there at a table, dealing studs, sat the dirty, mangy dog that named me Sue. Well, I knew that snake was my own sweet dad from a worn-out picture that my mama had. I knew that scar on his face and his evil eye. He was big and gray and bent and old, and I looked at him and my blood ran cold. Then I walked up to him and I said, How do you do? My name is Sue. Now you are going to die. Yeah, that's what I told him. Well, I hit him hard right between the eyes, and he went down, but to my surprise, come up with a knife and cut off a piece of my ear. So I busted a chair right across his teeth, and we crashed through the walls and into the street, kicking and a-gouging in the mud and the blood and the beard. Well, I probably have four tougher men, but I really can't remember when. He bit like a mule, <laughs> he kicked like a mule, and he bit like a crocodile. And I saw him laugh, and I saw him curse, and he went for his gun, but I drew mine first. I stood there looking at him, and I saw him smile. He said, son, this world is tough. If a man's going to make it, he's got to be rough. And I knew I wouldn't be there to help you along. So I give you that name, and I said goodbye. I knew you'd have to get tough or die. It's that name that's made you what you are today. Now you just fought one hell of a fight, and I know you hate me and you got the right to kill me now, and I don't blame you if you do. But before I die, you ought to thank me for the gravel in the gut and the spit in your eye, because I'm the son of a beep the name you My gun, I called him Par and he called me son. I went away with a different point of view. And I think about him every now and then, every time I try and every time I win. And if I ever have a boy, I think I'm going to name him Philip or Connor. Anything but Sue, I still hate that name. Many a maiden lost her morals to my trade. Many a soldier shed his lifeblood on my blade. The bastards hung me in the spring of 25, but I am still alive, and I'll be back again. I was a dam builder across the rivers deep and wide. Now I was a sailor across the river. I was born across the top. I was bent around, bent around. I fly a starship across the universe to fly, and when I reach the other side, I'll find a place to rest my spirit if I can. Perhaps I may become a highwayman again, or I may simply be a single drop of rain, but I will remain, and I'll be back again and again. On the outer Baku, where the churches are few and the men of religion are scanty, on a road never crossed set by folk who are lost, one Michael McGee had a shanty. Now Mike was the dad of a ten-year-old lad, plump, healthy and stoutly conditioned. He was strong as the best, but poor Mike had no rest, for the youngster had never been christened. And his wife used to cry, if the darling should die, Cynthia will not recognise, not recognise him. But by luck he survived till a preacher arrived who agreed straight away to baptise him. Now the young, young rogue, while they held their cologne, with his ear to the keyhole was listening. As he muttered and cried while his features turned white, what was the devil in all this christening? He was none of your dogs, he had 
seen their brown coats and it seemed to his small understanding. If the man in the frock made him one of the flock, it must surely be something much like, like branding. branding. Now away in the rush he set off for the bush, the with tears in his eyelids they glistened. Tis outrageous, said he, to, to bury youngsters like me, I'll be dashed if I'll stop to be christened. Like a young man and a dog, he ran into a log, and his father, with language uncivil, never heeding the praise, cried aloud in his haste, What the net and christened the devil but he stayed in snug as a bug in a rug. With his parents in vain might recruit him. Till his reverence spoke. He was fond of a joke. I don't know if he said that will do it. Help us stick up the log. Give the spalpeen a frog. Pop him lazy. Don't hurt him or me. Tis not long that he stands. I'm the water in hand. As he rushes out the sand, I'll name him. Here he comes, and for shame, I've forgotten his name. Is it Patrick, or Michael, or Dennis? Here the youngster ran out, and the priest gave a shout. Take your chance anyhow with McGinnis. The priest as he fled from the flask in his head. As he, oh, what was that he? The priest as he fled from the flask in his head. No, it's a bit more before that. I'll go and get it. Did he run out of the log? No, no, no. Did he run out of the log? Yokel think his bloom and throat is cut. And 
as he soaked and rubbed it, he made a rubber mark. He made a rubber mark. I suppose the flat too is pretty green up there in Iron Bar. A grunt was all reply he got. He shaved the bushman's chin, then made the water boiling hot and dipped the razor in. He raised his head, his brow grew black and pushed it and got a razor back across the victim's throat. Upon the newly shaved skin, it made a livid mark. No doubt it fairly took him in. He fetched a wild up country yell, might wake the dead to hear, and thought his throat he knew full well was cut from ear to ear. He struggled gamely to his feet and faced the murderous view. You've done me, you dog of beef. One hit before I go. I only wish I had a knife, you blessed murdering shark. But you will remember all your life the man from Iron Bark. He lifted up his hairy paw with one tremendous clout, landed on the barber's jaw and knocked the barber out. He set to work with a piece of nail. He made the place a wreck. He grabbed the nearest gilded youth and tried to break his neck. And all the while, his throat he held to save his vital spark. And murder, bloody murder, yelled the man from Iron Bar. A peeler man who heard the dead came in to see the show. He tried to run the bushman in, but he refused to go. And when at last the barber spoke, he said, "'Twas all big fun. "'Twas just a little harmless joke, a trifle overdone. "'A joke,' he cried. "'By George, that's fine. "'Lively sort of laugh. "'I'd like to catch that murdering swine some night in Iron Bark. And now while round the shearing floor, the listening shearer gape, he tells us he tells the story over and over, <coughs> the rags of his escape. Then barber chaps what keep it tote by George I've had enough. One tried to cut me blooming throat, but thank the Lord it's tough. And whether he's believed or not, there's one thing to remark that flowing bins are all the go up there. A boy in iron bark. Oh. I pray you don't mind. Up its far horizon, I love its jewel sea. sea, its beauty and its terror. The wide brown land for me. That's it. That's it. It starts off in. Um...